hello friends welcome to my youtube channel loon networks today in this session we will be learning about the osi model also called open system interconnection model the osi model is a seven layer model that is physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer and the application layer OSI model help us to understand how data is transferred from one computer to another in a computer network by connecting it through a RJ45 cable and through a NIC forms a network. When two computers are connecting with the RJ45 cable through NIC forms a network. But let's assume that one of our machine is a window operating system whereas another is a Linux operating system being installed then how these computers will communicate to each other so in order to accomplish successful communication between two different computers network or architectural OSI model was introduced by ISO ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization is what it was introduced in 1984 so let's start with the application layer now when i am saying that application layer it doesn't mean it contains application application over here i mean the application like a web browser or something uh, when you have a pc and i say that uh, your pc has an application it doesn't mean that the applica that particular application is an application layer over here i mean to say that our web browser uses the application layer protocols that need to work this application correctly let's uh, tell you one example before proceeding i would like to say what exactly is a protocol because you will be coming around this word again and again protocol network protocol and so on several protocols so a network protocol is an established set of rules that determines how data is transmitted between different devices in the same network essentially it allows connected devices to communicate with each other regardless of any differences in the internal process structure or design as we have seen in the previous slide that uh, where I have given an example saying that one of our machine is a window operating system and another is a Linux operating system. Both of these machines have a different structures. So in order to communicate, an OSI model was introduced along with a set of protocols. Protocols is nothing but a established set of rules to determine how data is transmitted. So application layer means network application that uses internet like browser, outlook, internet, etc. So now let's assume that you are on one computer, sitting on one computer and, try, uh, and have opened the browser, Google, Chrome or Mozilla, and you are trying to access a particular web website. So in this case, to call that website, you will be going to the URL www.facebook.com, for example. So the protocols which are being used over here, moreover for the website uh, purpose, will be HTTP and HTTPS. So your web browser is basically using a application layer protocol to reach to the particular website. Here example is shown, if you can see on the slide, the example is shown that your web browser which resides in your PC is not running on the application layer but it uses application layer protocol like HTTP, HTTPS to browse the internet. And on, not only your web browser but even other application uses a, a different type of protocols uh, to, finish, uh, to work out on their services. Like let's say for example, if you will take an example of Outlook, it uses SMTP to as a SMTP protocol to do its job. So there are several other protocols like FTP. It's used for file transfer purpose. FTP uh, file transfer protocol is used to transfer the files. 
telnet is for the remote connectivity ssh is again a remote connectivity a remote shell so let's move to the presentation layer presentation layer receives the data from application layer so when the presentation layer receives a data it is in the form of characters and numbers as you can see on the slide so uh, as soon as presentation layer receives the data from the application layer it converts its characters into a machine readable binary format that is one and zeros before data is transmitted presentation layer reduces the number as see very first what it does uh, it receives the data from the application layer which is in the form of characters and numbers the function of the presentation layer uh, then uh, uh, presentation layer convert those numbers characters into a machine readable format so this is the first function of presentation layer that is called translation so before data is transmitted further presentation layer reduce the number of bits that are used to represent the original data so this bit when it do, does the reduction process the data compression when it happens at that time there is a high possibility there will be a loss or even the communication uh, the compression will be lossless why it does uh, why it reduces the data because it reduces the size in order to make data transmission fast usually uh, you will see when uh, you are doing uh, live audio or video streaming this data trans fast data transmission is required and this is achieved using the redu reducing the sizes from the original uh, data form to the reduction one additionally at presentation layer to maintain the integrity of the data is uh, to maintain the integrity of the data the data is encrypted and enhances the security of the data so what is this integrity integrity is the ability to ensure that a system and its data has not suffered unauthorized modification means when it is sent from one location to another from one pc to another pc or from one network device to another network device or communicating device integrity of the data means integrity is the ability to ensure that the system and its data has not suffered any unauthorization modification so basically integrity protects not only data but also operating systems applications and hardware from being altered by unauthorized individuals the data is encrypted and enhances the security of the data and usually it's very common term you will be coming around this terms uh, many of the time in uh, confidentiality integrity availability cia trend so integrity i have explained that it is uh, is ability to ensure that system and data is not suffered any unauthorized modification so presentation layer is able to integrate the data in, uh, to achieve sorry to maintain the integrity of the data then there are some other terms so let me explain you over here confidentiality confidentiality is one of the core concept of cyber security confidentiality ensures that secret information is protected from unauthorized disclosure protecting confidentiality is a responsibility availability is what is availability availability is protecting the functionality of support system and ensuring that the data is fully available at the point in time or a prayed requirement when it is needed by the users okay so uh, as we, now we have seen that uh, presentation layer is able to maintain the integrity of the data at the same time the data is encrypted on this layer which enhances the security of the data flow at sender side data is encrypted like if you can see the uh, there is one uh, small diagram which i have added over here sender and receiver so at sender side the data is encrypted and at the receiver side data is decrypted and for doing this encryption and decryption again a protocol is used ssl protocol or a secure socket layer which is called ssl or a secure socket layer protocol it is used in the presentation layer for encryption and decryption purpose 
So we have seen that presentation layer performs three basic functions. Transmission, like when the data is received from the presentation layer, from the application, sorry, from the application layer, it is received in the alphabet and numeric form. So it translates it into the machine readable format that is binary zeros and one. The second job what it performs is data compression. It compresses the data to speed up the process. Then the third important thing which is uh, done over here is encryption and decryption the data to maintain the integrity. So this three uh, task is done on the presentation layer. Let's move to the session layer. Uh, this uh, layer uh, we can understand by taking an example. Uh, let's uh, take an example. You have a wedding function uh, in your home and you are arranging a wedding planner. So what's the job of the wedding planner? Wedding planner will initiate each and everything. It will establish a perfect platform for your function. Then when the guest goes, it will close everything. It will clean up everything. This is what the wedding planner do from start to end. Similar is what the session layer does. It will establish a connectivity, enable sending and receiving of the data, and finally closing, closing the session. That is terminating or closing of the session. So for session layer, like I said, uh, have given you example of a wedding planner. It also has its own planner called API, Application Programming Interfaces. And the second one is NetBIOS, Network Basic Input Output System. So just before the connection is established, as we have learned over here that at session layer, connectivity is established. It is responsible for enable sending and receiving the data and finally closing the session or you can say terminating the session just before the connection is established. As uh, a time before a connection is established, it performs several other jobs as well. Before a connection is established, server perform a function called authentication. What is authentication? Authentication is a process of knowing who you are for the server. And it authenticate using a credential, username and password. So if the username and password is matched, the connection is established. After authenticating the user, authorization is checked. Authorization is a process used by a server to check if you have a proper permission to access a file or any data. So session layer performs three different jobs. At session layer, three different jobs are performed. Authentication, authorization and session management. So we have seen that your browser itself functions at three different layers. Your web browser performs functions of all these three layers, application, presentation and session. This for understanding the last one, your web browser performs function of all these three layer application, presentation and session. So let's say that uh, you go to www.facebook.com uh, for reaching till there, you have used HTTP and HTTPS protocol, that is application layer protocol. After that, uh, you have, uh, once you have, uh, was trying to log in, you have uh, entered the user and password that uh, whether you have done the authentication. Once you were authenticated, what else are permitted to you, you was authorized. So in this way, we can say that your web browser performs all these three layer functions, application layer function, presentation layer function, and session layer function. Next comes the transport layer. Transport layer is responsible for reliability of the communication through segmentation, flow control, and error control. In data communication networks, Packet segmentation is the process of dividing a data packet into a smaller units for transmission over the network. Now let's understand the data packet, the term data packet. What is data packet? Data packet is a unit of data 
made into a single package that travels over a given network path. Data packets are used in internet protocol transmission for data that navigates the web and in other kinds of network. Transport layer performs a flow control mechanism between the adjacent layer of the TCP IP model. T TCP also prevents data loss due to fast sender and slow receiver by imposing some flow control techniques. TCP is a reliable transport protocol. Error control includes mechanism for detecting corrupted segments, lost segment, out of order segment, and duplicate segment. Error control also includes a mechanism for correcting errors after they are detected. So see that uh, it is said that TCP is a reliable transport layer protocol. Error control includes mechanism for detecting blah blah blah. So let's understand the things in a very simple term. Uh, on transport layer, the, as the name suggests, transport it is responsible for transporting. So what? transporting data transporting now it uses two different protocols tcp that is transmission control protocol and udp user data ground protocol basically tcp is a, a reliable protocol whereas user data program is not so reliable so let's uh, say what is the difference between them let's uh, learn what is the difference between them tcp guarantees you a communication whereas udp doesn't when, like let's say for example uh, if you want to send an email over there you need a guaranteed transmission that yes whatever you have sent 100% it is received over there the TCP communication comes into the picture like uh, whenever you are going from your computer uh, using an application called Outlook uh, the application layer comes into the picture is SMTP over there uh, whatever you are sending that will be uh, carry the job is will be carried out by a transport layer tcp protocol because you need a guaranteed transfer whereas when you talk about um, video streaming or something over there the udp is used because it's not a guaranteed delivery there is a possibility something might be lost or something since tcp continuously check and acknowledge the time frame for the communication is bit higher as compared to udp network layer the network layer is the third layer of the osi model it handles the service request from the transport layer and further forward the service request to the data link layer the data link layer is the next layer the network layer so the main role of the network layer is to move the packets from sending host to receiving host the role is to the role of the network layer is to move the packet from the sending host whatever the sending host is sending it the role is to move that particular packet as received and need to be forwarded to the receiving host so the protocols which are being used on the layer, layer 3 product, uh, over on the network layer are ospf bgp and isis intermediate system to intermediate system ospf stands for open <coughs> sorry BGP stands for Border Gateway Protocol, ISIS stands for Intermediate System to Intermediate System. This layer 3 protocols, OSPF, BGP and ISIS is used to determine the best possible path. Next comes the Data Link Layer. Data Link Layer receives packet from the network layer. It has two addressing, logical addressing and the physical addressing. Logical addressing is also called as IP addresses, physical addressing is the MAC address, the ad um, physical address of the machine. Data link layer provides a functional and procedural means to transfer data between network entities and to detect and possibly correct errors that may occur in the physical layer. So over here, flow control and error control is being taken care on this layer. Flow control for the data and error control for the data flow. Data link control service is a service provided by the data link layer to provide reliable data transfer over the physical medium. And the protocol which is being used over uh, one of the protocol is ARP. What is the role of the ARP protocol? See, whenever is, uh, there is any, uh, let's uh, see over here on this picture. It's a Mac 1 computer with IP 1 address. So if it need to reach to the 
Mac 2 computer uh, with IP2. Data packet is formed as Mac 1. Mac 1 is the physical address of Mac 1. Then Mac 2 is unknown. IP1. IP1 is the IP address of the Mac 1. IP2 is the, this, uh, the IP address of the Mac 2 computer, segment and tail. So what it will do, it need to know the physical address of the Mac 2 machine. Or if you can see over here, what, so what system A will do, it will be looking for the physical address of a node with IP address 141.23.56.23. Similar as in the above picture, Mac 1 is, uh, is looking for the physical address of IP2. So it will simply send the ARP request as a broadcast. As soon as the uh, it send an ARP request, it will be broadcasted and within the network it will be sent to each and every node. So whichever node has the IP address will repl reply back with its own MAC address. So this is how the ARP re re request is broadcasted. The ARP reply is unicasted to achieve the destination MAC address. What is data link control? It is a logic or procedure used to convert the raw stream of bits provided by the physical layer into a reliable data link. What flow control does? Regulate sending of frames to match the ability of receiver to observe them. What error control does? Retransmission of damaged or unacknowledged frames. Link. Uh, so, whenever there is a communication established between a, a, a PC and a server, what will happen? Let's assume that a server has a transmission rate of 1 GB, whereas a PC has a transmission rate of 100 uh, Mbps. If a server is trying to send a data at a rate of 1 Gbps, definitely a PC doesn't have so much speed so the negotiation happens this is uh, where the pc talks to the server and say that i am capable of receiving only 100 mbps so the server start to uh, send the data or transfer the data at the, the speed which a pc can negotiate so on this layer basically uh, it regulates the sending of frame to match the ability of a receiver to observe them. This is how the flow control works. This is of a terminology flow control where the communicating devices communicate to each other and adjust their data transfer rate. And let's assume that during the time of this uh, transfer, if there is any kind of a data packet which is being damaged or anything that goes unacknowledged, uh, on this uh, particular layer, uh, the, the retransmission of the damage or acknowledged frame is done, which is termed as error control. Then we, uh, the link management is done on this layer to initiate, maintain and terminate the data exchange. The last one, the physical layer. Till now, data from the application layer has been segmented by the transport layer placed into the packet by a network layer and framed by the data link layer, which is a sequence of binary zeros and ones. If you can see the high, uh, from the Facebook, uh, you have texted a message, hi, uh, this was sent by a transport layer, then it has been segment, uh, uh, sorry, hi, this was initiated by a transport layer, this was initiated at the transport layer, then it has been segmented, sorry, 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 uh, if you can see uh, the data hi, it has been placed into the application layer, then it has been segmented by a transport layer, and the is being the packet is being placed at the network layer at the down it is being framed by the data link layer with the source mac address destination mac address packets and fcs thereafter a sequence of binary zeros and one is being placed so now physical layer converts this bits that is zeros and ones into a signal and transmit over a local media. It can be uh, 
the signal which we are talking signal it can be electrical signal if it is the media the media is a copper cable it can be light signal if it is a optic fiber cable and it can be a radio signal in case of air so signal generated by a physical media depends upon type of media which is being used to connect devices so i believe that now using this tutorial you will have a better understanding of osi model on which applica uh, which layer what works and this is the slide which give you a summarized content of all the seven application layer so friends if you like my video please subscribe my youtube channel and do share with your friends thank you for watching